Hi everyone, this is Andrew Bourne, and this video is about using E and the natural logarithm to solve decay questions. Real quick, here's what we're going to cover. We will see how the decay equation works, how to apply it to some practical situations like radioactive isotopes, temperature, and memory. I am not going to talk about where E itself comes from because then I have to talk about words like limits, infinity, summations, and I want to keep things, you know, down to earth. But I did find this really cool equation by Sir Isaac Newton. He came up with this uh, to express E and, uh, well, it's kind of cool to look at. So I do want to very quickly explain that E is a constant. One major issue that gets in the way of understanding is that it looks like a variable. I mean, after all, we use A, B, and C, and X, Y, Z, the letters of the alphabet, all over the place in algebra problems. And so E, it looks like a variable too, but it's not. Um, I looked on Wikipedia, and I found that it's sometimes called Euler's number, or Napier's constant, and E is a constant, just like um, the Greek letter pi stands in place of the number 3.14159, on and on and on. E stands in place of, okay, get ready, 2.718281828459045, on and on and on. So also similar to pi, it's an irrational number. The decimal just keeps going on forever. Anyway, E and the natural logarithm are inverse operations. See, just like this little picture. For example, e to the power of unknown x equals 10. Just a little example here. Uh, so if you want to find x, no problem. Use the natural log and you will cancel out e and you've solved for x. Here's the decay equation. It's pretty small. a is how much you have left. Uh, this is a decay equation, so it will always be smaller when you do the numbers. B is the beginning amount. And by the way, A and B are just arbitrary letters that I picked. A, amount you have left. B is the beginning amount, okay? Uh, so B is the amount that you start with, or um, it's the amount that you had in the past. And you'll see an equation, and this will make sense a little bit later. Uh, there's E, your constant, and it is to the power of rate multiplied by time. Rate will always be a negative number, because this is an, a decay equation, so it's going to be negative, and time will always be a positive number, because time goes forward. Um, there are four variables in this equation, and you will always be given three. And if you're not, then you'll be given some additional info that will enable you to get the three that you need. A graph of a decay equation looks like this. Let's do a question that involves half-life. I like to call this one how long have I been dead? Okay, so here we go. Carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope that has a half-life of 5,700 years. Find out the rate of decay. This is good. When you hear the words half-life, you know two things. You know the original amount, and you know the amount remaining. Here's the setup for the equation. Write in the variables, you already know. Since we know half of the carbon-14 remains, then we know A. The original amount of stuff you started with is 1. It could be 1 gram, 1 pound, 1 whatever. Just so you know, you started with some amount, and this side is half. Rate is R, that's what we're looking for, and T, the time, will be 5,700 years. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this so I have a little bit more room. First things first, 1 multiplied by anything doesn't change it, so we can erase that. We're going to need to use natural log on both sides. Natural log cancels out the E, and we will need a calculator for this. You can either type in natural log 0.5, or if you're feeling fancy, you can type in natural log 1 half. Same diff. Write in the calculated result on the left, negative 0.69315 and simplify the right side, rate times 5,700, and divide both sides by 5,700 to get rate all by itself. Use the calculator one more time, 
hopefully you can just hit divide by 5,700 and we've got the rate. Hey, one cool thing I want to tell you about, for those of you that are using a TI-84 calculator, you can store this number in a memory and that makes it easier to work with later. So by pressing the, the key marked STO on the uh, left side of your calculator and then select the alpha key and then uh, select R, put it in there for rate, then you can use the letter R as a stand-in for the number itself. You don't have to type in the number a whole bunch of times. Now that we have the rate of decay, you can answer all kinds of questions like how old some things may be. Let's say you've got a sample of a mastodon. Remember that dead thing at the beginning. The sample has 28.2% remaining and you need to find out how old it is through carbon dating. Carbon dating measures how much of the carbon-14 isotope has decayed and changed into carbon-13. So here's the equations and this time we're going to solve for T, the amount of time. 28.2, we can leave the percentage. Over here is 100%, the original amount. Divide both sides by 100. Use the natural log on both sides to cancel out that E. Okay, we'll need the calculator again to calculate the natural log of 0.282. Remember, that's actually 28.2% of the sample remaining. And there we go. And then we can divide both sides by negative 1.126 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now remember this number was inside the variable r on the calculator. I'm going to round the result to the nearest 100 years. Our mastodon died about 10,400 years ago. Okay, moving on. The next question that we're going to approach with decay equations is something I bet you are familiar with. Pizza that's too hot. And this one is called, when may I eat that pizza? Here's the equation for what's called Newton's Law of Cooling. It looks kind of scary, but in just a sec you'll see that it's really just a big fill in the blank. This is the temperature you want. This and this is the surrounding air temperature. This is the initial hot, hot pizza with delicious toppings of your choice. E we're familiar with and Negative K is just the cooling rate, and T is time, but for this question, it's in minutes, not years, because who can wait years for pizza? Not me, and not you either. I said this was a fill-in-the-blank kind of formula, so let's do just that. Hot pizza, fresh from the oven, let's say 350 degrees Fahrenheit. The surrounding air temperature is a comfy, comfy 72 degrees. The roof of your mouth will scald if you chomp down on 350 degree pizza, but 120 degrees is just right. Recommended by Goldilocks. Uh, let's say that through years of research, you've determined that the cooling rate of a slice of pizza is negative 0.117. That's all we need. Okay, so when do we eat? Okay, we're going to have to use the uh, horrible looking equation again. And we're going to replace uh, everything that we can. We're going to plug things in. So we want the temperature to be 120. The air temperature is 72. The uh, starting temperature of the pizza is 350. And also here we're going to write in 72 because that's the air temperature. And we're going to replace negative K with the cooling constant negative 0.117. We'll simplify what's in the parentheses and we'll subtract 72 from both sides and a quick little rewrite here so we have more room and before we use that natural log we have to divide both sides by 278 okay quick little rewrite now we can use the natural log and here's the calculated result now with Egon we can divide both sides by negative 0.117 and here is our answer about 15 minutes. The final example is about memory and it's titled My Brain is Full. You probably knew it's hard to remember names. Try being a teacher. Your memory decays when you don't use it and it's no different for teachers. Over summer, in about two weeks, your teacher forgets half of the names of his or her students. This one we'll explore with the help of graphing technology. Here is the equation. 
and below are the window presets. You may want to pause the video if you're going to try this yourself, which is good. You learn better when you work it and are hands on. Okay, well, let's graph it and have some fun and see how bad the teacher's memory is. There's a decay curve, and the red line is the 50% uh, point. Um, if you press the um, second key and then the calc or the trace key, you can uh, calculate a value and say, how many kids does he remember after uh, three weeks? Put in 21, this is days, that would be three weeks. And we see about 35 students. Uh, also, you can hit the trace key just by itself. And using the directional arrow keys on your calculator, you can uh, kind of wander over the curve here. X, of course, is days. And Y is the number of student names remembered. And as you can see here, we're closing in on um, six weeks here. And um, yeah, so. There's always going to be a few students that they remember, right? Okay, well that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you got a lot out of this.